Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be doing some more getting started with Unity. So it's going to be a more beginner facing video, though it's still definitely valid for anyone, regardless of their skill level and experience, because it took me quite a while to, you know, really get into debugging and understand how to do it well. For a long time, I used to just use Unity's built-in debug.log. You guys may or may not be aware what that is, but after this video, you will be. And I'll highlight the cases where you should use it and where you shouldn't, and why you should and why you shouldn't. So let's get into the video. I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get started. So I'll be splitting this video up into two parts. Part one will all be about debug.log, about what it is in case you're not aware, how to use it, you know, we'll do a little code example, and then I'll highlight when you should use it and when you shouldn't and why. Then for step two, it will be the same, but about debugging. So I'll show you how to use it inside Visual Studio, why you should use it, when you should, and when you shouldn't use it. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. So step one, what is debug.log and why we should use it? So debug.log is a way to output to the Unity console, whatever you want, just data, right? So for example, let's say you're not sure about your input. So you put some code to say, you know, when, when they press spacebar, write something to the console. Now right now, in our little getting started with Unity project, which is available on GitHub, link is in the description below. If I press play, we've got these cubes that fall, we've got the sphere that falls, and if I press spacebar, it jumps, okay? So obviously I've got some logic that happens when I press spacebar, and that makes the thing go up in the air. If we go look at the code over here, this is it. We just say every frame check if they press spacebar, if they did add force. Now let's say over here we add debug.log, okay? This is it, you just write debug.log, and inside you pass in whatever you want it to log. So I'm gonna say the message, hi. If I go back to Unity, keep in mind this is called every single frame. Whenever this line is run, it will log hi. So if we go back, the console window, if you don't know where this is, go to window, general, console, okay? And console has some different options here. I'm gonna turn that off. So we've got clear collapse. I'll, I'll cover these in a minute. Let's press play. Notice how hi is getting logged every single frame of the game. And what we can do is we can press clear, but obviously it's gonna keep getting logged because it's going and going and going, but it will clear the logs. Collapse will actually take all the logs that are the exact same, which is everything here, and just put it into one and it'll tell you how many times it's happened rather than just spamming it, okay? Then clear on play just means that whenever you press play, it will reset this, so it's at 3000, now it's back at zero. Then clear on build does the same when you build your game. Now, this is useful, right? Because, for example, I can move this and I can say over here, do the same thing. So that means that it'll only log now when I press spacebar, okay? So when I press spacebar, it'll say hi, and then it'll also say, you know, well, it'll do the jump. So if I press space, hi, hi. Hi. Obviously it goes two, three, four. If I turn off collapse, you see it works, okay? Now, that's how people generally use it at the start. They use debug.log everywhere to make sure certain things are happening. So for example, they might say here, you know, jumped or player jumped. So then we can see jumped and then elsewhere we can put a different log to do something else. And I, I understand why people might do that because they might think, you know, it's just useful information going on in the, in the log. The problem is, Every time you actually write to the console, every time you do debug.log, it actually also writes to a text file on your PC. And writing to a text file on your PC is actually kind of slow. And especially in a game when you're going for performance, it can be quite bad. So people recommend that you use debug.log not every frame, you only use it in certain places and usually not during gameplay because when it's during gameplay and you're trying to go for high FPS, it can make a difference. And I'm gonna show you how much difference it's gonna make so. Okay, so to show you the harms of actually using debug.log everywhere, here's the profiler. Now, I'm going to do a separate video on the profiler. It's a useful tool in Unity for seeing how much time your game is taking to do different things. So you can find areas of optimization, what's causing lag spikes and so on. And as you see here, this is our game when it's running normally over here. Okay, when it's at this kind of constant line. And then there's a spike here and the color of the spike, you can see what's using up most of the color. It's this kind of like dark green kind of uh, swamp kind of color. And this is in others, okay? And others over here is actually part of the editor loop. So the editor loop is basically the time taken to, you know, render the entire editor and run everything, run like the profiler, for example. So don't have to, you don't have to worry about the editor loop because that will be heavily reduced. Well, that'll be gone basically when you actually build the game. You only need to really worry about the player loop, okay? Because that's your logic and the actual gameplay. So right now that's taking, let's see, on most frames, roughly 0.5, okay? It slightly goes up, slightly goes down, but it's roughly 0.5. And that's just running with no debug.logs. So that's the entire update is taking 0.5 seconds. Now if I go into the update here and add a debug.log, okay. Keep in mind guys, this is only in one place. I'm logging every frame in one place. If I go press play again, okay. And let's go pick some different frames. So go over here. You actually might notice now it's gone up from 0.5 average to roughly one average. It goes above one, it goes up to 1.5. 
down to maybe 0 0.8. Okay, this is a lot higher. If you go into here, you can actually see in the update what's taking the time. Debug.log, here it is. It's using 0 0.3 seconds. That is over half of the time than the actual update entirely took originally. But now we've added this, it's using so much more time. And you can imagine this is in one place every frame. What if you have it in? You know, maybe five places every frame. Okay, you press play. And now we go to a frame and we go look down here and we see in the update, let's open that up. Debug.log is now taking an entire 1.04 milliseconds. And that's double the time the entire update loop took to do on its own just by having five logs every frame. Now, obviously you might not have five logs every frame. That's why I'm telling you, do not, you know, in your game, do not leave debug.logs happening on every frame. You might have it on certain, you know, rare occasions, like maybe when you make a multiplayer game and you connect to the server, you might want to say that like, da -da -da, successfully connected or failed to connect. That's fine, that happens very, very rarely. But just try and avoid debug.log at all costs. Um, especially every frame, because as you see, it can kill your game's performance, honestly. Uh, it doesn't seem like something that can. And the reason it happens is because it's outputting to a text file and that takes a long time. At least that's why I've been told like why it takes so long, because at the end of the day, you think it's just, you know, some text. But no, it's much more than that. Do not use debug.log in many places. Try and use it as, you know, sparingly as possible, okay? Now I'm gonna show you the alternative as to, you know, how to easily debug using the actual built-in Unity, well, sorry, the Visual Studio debugger, okay? That'll save you a lot of time. It'll save you a lot of performance because you don't have to worry about adding in debug.logs. Uh, another thing is if you ever think, you know, I need to log this, so you have to go debug.log, you have to write a line of code, okay? Then you have to actually wait for it to recompile your code because you've changed your code. Go back into Unity, wait for it to recompile. Then you have to go run it, test it, and then once you're done, you have to go and remove it. So the next thing I'm about to show you which is the debugging uh, in the editor, sorry, in Visual Studio. It's a lot faster to do. You don't have to recompile. It's so easy. Let's get into it. Okay, we might as well start here. So we want to know, for example, whenever we jump. So the debug.log way would be debug.log, like jumped or whatever, right? So you just type jumped, and now I can see when I jumped. And that's nice and all, but it's not that useful. And as I said, you have to recompile and do all that lot. To use the debugger in Unity, all you need to do simply is press this play attached to Unity. Give it a second, it's done. Then you just click on this gray bar at the side, um, which line you want to add a breakpoint to, okay? So I want to add a breakpoint here. And all that means is my game is gonna pause when it reaches this line of code, which is effectively a, a way of telling me that it's um, actually reached that line of code. So I press space. Uh, the game hasn't been restarted since earlier. So let's try again. Okay, I press space bar. Now, as you see, it stopped here. Now that's useful and all, you know, that's the same effectively as outputting that I jumped. I'm now aware that I jumped. But another really big benefit to doing debugging is I can now mouse over any variable, anything really, and see its value without having to write code to say debug.log the value of this, debug.log the value of that. So for example, over here, I want to read my jump force. Well, my jump force is five. Vector3.up is actually the same as zero, one, zero. So that's one in the y-axis. And force mode, velocity change over here, you can see and there's nothing really to read about that. You can see my reference to the rigid body. You can then go in the rigid body and read the drag, the center of mass. You can read everything all about it on here. You can have whatever you want. And also if you have more code down here, you can actually use these um, keys here, these buttons. Now they are, there are shortcuts to F11, F10, whatever. And this lets you step into means go to the next line. And if there's a function, go into it. And step over means go to the next line. If there's a function, just move over it. And you can't step into built-in methods. So for example, rigidbody that add force, you can't go into that code because it's like Unity code. You know, if you have F12 on it, you can't go read the actual code. But if it's code you've written in your game, you can definitely do that. So for example, I'm going to write some code real quick. I'm going to write a private void test. Okay, and then like say, you know, int a equals zero, a plus equals one. Okay, for example. And then here, I'm going to say test. Let's say over here, I put my breakpoint when it reaches this line of code. Attach to Unity, go back. Obviously, I've changed my code, so I do have to restart. Now, when I jump, it stops here, okay? Now, if I press down, so sorry, like step into, it goes to the next line. Now, if I press step over, it'll actually just ignore that function to go past it, okay? And then continue going. Then if I press space again, it's going to hit it again. But this time, if I press step into rather than step over, it actually goes into the function. So now if I keep pressing this button, next line, okay, we've got an integer called A and it's equal to zero. Go to the next line, 
A is still zero because this line hasn't finished yet. We've just reached the line, so A is still zero, but I'm adding one to it. Now if we go to the next line, if I mouse back over A, you'll see that A is now one. We actually see the value of A. Now, obviously this is just a random example, but the point is it's so much easier and so much faster to actually debug all this stuff. You can debug whatever you need in your game now without having to output to the console, pause, start again, read it, okay, back again. It is so much faster to do it this way. You don't get any problems with, you know, outputting and having laggy games because of debug.log statements and all that lot. And yeah, it's just really easy. And then once you're done, you just press this pause button and it goes back to running like normal. Obviously, um, once you're attached, actually, it doesn't matter if you start and restart your game, it stays attached. You don't have to reconnect or anything. Um, it still works just fine. I can go put a breakpoint wherever I want. I could just put it here. But if I put it here, it'll just instantly get called because this is still getting called every frame. So if I press continue, Continue basically means, you know, just go to the next breakpoint or go to the next frame. But obviously every frame this gets called because it's in the update. Whereas if I put it here and press continue, we can go back and play our game. Press spacebar and now it gets called. We're here, okay? RB, we read about it, da da da. And then just like, as I said, we go into test, do the test code, continue. Do this, go there. And this, this is actually what's happening every frame for our code, right? Every frame it's saying, did I press space? Did I press space? Did I press space? Did I press space? Okay. Now, as soon as I do press space, we're in here, okay? It does the code, then it goes back to every frame. Did we press space? Did we press space? Did we press space? Okay. So, I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, let me know down below. Let me know, you know, any questions that you've got. If you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe. It'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Liz Kimber, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rec, Yoris Letter, Hades Zorko, Rene, Budere, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.